wild. He had let everyone down. She was waiting as he pulled into the yards. Molly was bright yellow. She had great big wheels and a shiny funnel. She looked very smart. Hello, Thomas puffed cheerfully. Hello, Molly chuffed back. Molly looked sad. What's the matter? asked Thomas. Emily laughed at me because I have to take empty freight cars to the coaling plant, Molly puffed sadly. I want to take full freight cars like a really useful engine. This made Thomas feel sad. How can I help Molly feel important, he thought to himself. Then he saw some tarps flapping in the wind. This gave Thomas an idea. I know what we can do, puffed Thomas. Molly reversed the empty freight cars into a siding. Thomas asked Molly's driver to cover her freight cars with the tarps. With your cars covered up, no one will know they are empty, puffed Thomas. We can make everyone think you're carrying a special delivery. Then I will feel important, Molly chuffed cheerfully. Soon, Molly's freight cars were decorated with the beautiful lanterns. She was taking the cars to the coaling plant for a very important job. Your freight cars look very special now, puffed Thomas. You must go through Abbey Station. Lots of engines will be there to see you. Thomas and Molly arrived at Abbey Station. Emily, Percy, and Gordon were waiting. Percy gasped. Oh! She looks magnificent, exclaimed Emily. And for the first time since she'd been on Sodor, Molly felt special. But not for long. A strong gust of... Molly felt silly. And not very important at all. So she puffed away as fast as she could. Molly had stopped in a siding. She looked very sad. I'm sorry I made you look silly, puffed Thomas. But they are waiting for your empty freight cars at the coaling plant. But I've nearly run out of coal, moaned Molly. Don't worry, puffed Thomas. I can help you get there. Thomas pushed and Molly pulled. Thomas and Molly worked together. And they arrived at the coaling plant in no time at all. There were lots of engines waiting for them. They all need... Molly felt so proud it made her axles tingle. We need even more freight cars, chuffed Henry. I'll get them, Molly chuffed cheerfully. And I'll help, puffed Thomas. Molly filled up with more coal, then Molly and Thomas raced back to the yard. They collected some more empty freight cars, and they puffed quickly away. Gordon was stopped at a junction. His signal had turned to red. Out of the way, puffed Molly. Empty freight cars coming through. You see, laughed Thomas. Sometimes empty freight cars are more important than your express. Gordon's face went as red as the sea. And Molly felt more special than special. There are many different animals on the island of Sodor. There are deer, strong Henry. Winter was coming to the island of Sodor. Summertime on the island of Sodor. The engines were very busy. It was summer on the island of Sodor. All the engines were excited the storming season on the island of Sodor. All the engines were battling against the bad weather.
up the line, Emily and Whiff pass more engines. Henry puffed up the line. He saw pipes across the track. They were blocking his way. I thought you were collecting presents, chuffed Molly. You're supposed to be at the airport, snorted James. Edward has my lucky trucks, whistled Henry. I must find him. Don't worry, called Rocky. I'll have the line cleared in no time. Henry waited sadly as Rocky lifted the pipes from the tracks. Then he chuffed on to find Edward and his lucky trucks. Thomas raced round a bend. Be careful, Thomas, Molly tooted. The wind is filling the boat's sails. But Thomas rushed by so quickly he didn't hear her. There would be picnics all over the island. And Ben told Molly. They cheered and they whistled. They felt so jolly. So door day arrived. Stanley chuffed proudly in with the man. Thomas was pleased for his friend. The mayor, Sir Topham Hatt, and Lady Hatt stood by the new tower. It was Jeremy. He flew high in the sky and over the town of Grit. At the yards, Harry and Bert were with Neville, the new engine. Neville was a steamy. But he had a square body like a diesel. Neville was backing up towards some trucks. Then there was trouble. Watch where you're going, clumsy wheels. Harry and Bert laughed. Neville looked sad. <laughs> Thomas arriving with Neville. It was Neville pulling Annie and Clarabelle. Hello, puffed Neville cheerfully. I'm not talking to you, Thomas huffed crossly. Neville didn't know what he had done. Hello, said Neville happily. Emily let out a wish of steam. It's no use trying to make friends with me. I know you're going to biff into all the steam his whistle. And Neville puffed sadly away. Neville was speeding through the countryside as fast as he could. Suddenly, Neville saw a barrier on the track. He slammed on his brakes. But it was too late. Neville was in terrible trouble. He was on the broken end of the bridge. Gently bumped Clarabelle and was coupled up. Thomas was very scared. Slowly and steadily, he began to pull Neville back from the edge. The bridge made a creaking noise. With one big puff, he pulled Neville's wheels off the bridge. Thomas had done it. He had saved Neville and Annie and Clarabelle. Thank you, whistled Neville. Neville was very happy. At last, he knew he had a good friend in Thomas. Up the line, Emily and Whiff passed more engines. When they saw Whiff, they all laughed too. Neville arrived to collect some freight cars. He was excited. The brass band is arriving at Brendam Docks. Hooray! I like the brass band. So do I, but I'm never asked to pull them. If you go to the washdown now, you'll soon be ashamed. Fergus liked helping Mavis, but he didn't like the way the twins were. A brand new tank engine was racing across the island of Sodor. He was very excited. Didn't want to be late. It's very impressive. This is Arthur, said Sir Topham Hatt. Nice to meet you. 
Puff means he's never been naughty or made a mess, replied Thomas. The three engines were soon at work. Thomas and Percy were bumping freight cars. They knew this was naughty, but they were having fun. Oh, thank you, wished the new engine. He'd never been naughty before. Arthur's first job was to push a trainload of fruit to market. The troublesome truck started to sing. How rude, huffed Arthur. This gave Thomas a naughty idea. Sir Topham Hatt doesn't like the troublesome truck singing, said Thomas. You must stop them. Thank you, said Arthur. I will. Arthur was glad he could keep the troublesome trucks in order. Arthur chuffed cheerfully through the countryside. Soon, the troublesome truck started singing again. Stop singing, huffed Arthur. Trucks should do as they are told. The troublesome trucks were cross. If they couldn't sing, they would teach Arthur a lesson instead. We'll show him, they giggled. He can't push us around. Arthur struggled over bridges. And he huffed and puffed through tunnels. came over the top of a big hill. You can't catch us, laughed the troublesome trucks. <laughs> but there was trouble ahead. Arthur's driver applied the brakes, but it was too late. Squash fruit flew everywhere. Arthur was upset. His spotless record was ruined. Arthur, what a mess, puffed Thomas. Troublesome trucks were singing. I told them to stop, but they made me go too fast. Thomas told Sir Topham Hatt what he had done. But Thomas, you must help clear up this mess. Everyone worked hard, and Thomas took the loaded trucks away. That evening... Arthur was having the squashed fruit cleaned out of his funnel. Hello, Thomas. Arthur, I'm sorry I played a trick on you, said Thomas. Thanks for owning up to it, replied Arthur. Maybe spotless records are made to be broken, smiled Thomas. And then mended again, finished Arthur. Just like friendships. Working on the island of Sodor. He's new to the railway and is still learning his way around. One morning, he discovered the fishing village. The sun made the water sparkle, and the seagulls called across the harbor. This was Arthur's favorite place. That evening, Sir Topham Hatt came to the sheds. Arthur hoped he would be chosen was disappointed. Sir Topham Hatt sent him to haul coal to the steelworks. That evening, Thomas was at the washdown when Arthur puffed in. Do I smell a fishy engine? He teased. Arthur wished he could go to the fishing village instead of the steelworks. He'd be much happier than Thomas. Arthur was surprised to see Thomas in the tidal pool. Are you all right, Thomas? No, John Van will be here soon, called Arthur's driver. Arthur knew he had to hurry. He raced along the line to the docks and arrived there just in time. Later, Arthur went to see Thomas at the fitter's yard. You, said Arthur, I wish I had the fishing village line all the time. Being Sir Topham Hatt came to the sheds. Me, Arthur blurted out. And please, sir, may I run on that line all the time? Thomas doesn't like fish, but I do. Then Arthur was delighted. The next morning, he popped into the fishing village right on time. The smell of fish was everywhere, but he was sure he had the most beautiful line on the island of Sodor. 
Murdoch was looking forward to a good night's rest. But Salty and Harvey were full of questions. Have you ever worked Marseille? Uh, we're only being friendly, matey. Bulgy was soon fast asleep. But the hens missed. One, two, three, four, five. Can you believe your eyes are five? New wedges in the shed. Celebrate the fun. One, two, three, shine but true. They'll be there for you. There's Murdoch and Arthur. Then Arthur arrived. Arthur warned Thomas that the route to Brendam Docks was bumpy. Only take five freight cars at a time, said Arthur. And go slow and steady. Arthur carefully collected five freight cars. Then he puffed slowly out of the harbor yard. He didn't want to go slow and Arthur and Salty were already there. Getting clean is lovely, puffed Arthur. Especially when you smell of fish, said Thomas. Arthur has a very important job today. He has to pick up special coal for Henry from Brendam Docks. He feels really useful. What's this? <coughs> Hay bales are blocking his track. Arthur has to move them out of the way. Which of his friends will help Arthur clear the hay bales? Bertie the bus to take them away? Trevor? Or Harold the helicopter? Click on the one you think would help Arthur best. <coughs> Have you chosen a picture yet? of jam can help. No, pots of jam won't clear the boulder. They'll just make it sticky. Try again. Do you think the cable drums can help? Are you sure? No. Cable won't clear the boulder. It will just tie it up. Try again. strong enough to airlift the boulder off the track. Well done. 
now Arthur can finish his important job at the docks. Arthur would like to thank you for helping him. Click on the rewards box, please, to see what it is. Thomas's friend. A friend will always help you. Arthur helped Thomas. It's good to have friends. Gordon and the Mechanic. There are railway lines all over the island of Sodor. Percy was waiting at a signal. Arthur puffed slowly into a siding. He had heavy wagons of fish. Look out, Arthur! Arthur's wheels spun as he raced straight into the buffers. The fish shot into the air. Oh, no, cried Arthur. Just then, Thomas chased through the junction. Sorry, Arthur, he gasped. Gasped, told Emily, along the coast track. Have you heard the news? Thomas is back. Oliver and Arthur passed them coming down. They both thought his special was magnificent. But the water wheel was very heavy. 